So of course, as all of you guys know, tonight was the big contest. Everyone watched it. It was really close, but obviously old Donnie couldn't let the night be about anything. Couldn't let it be about a game between two great teams. He had to make it about himself. And he did so with what I can only call two sickening videos that have horrified the entire globe, the entire nation with their content. While at the same time, one of his top lawyers had the audacity to go on TV and insult the entire world watching this interview with the most BS claims trying to defend Donald Trump's criminality, especially around his willful obstruction and retention of documents that didn't belong to him. So I want to go over this because these videos by Trump are, are vomit inducing with how awful they are and how they put the entire world at risk. But we have to to set the stage a little bit because this is the sort of man that would bring the sort of lawyers that are willing to make these sorts of absolutely bonkers legal arguments. Guys, if, if the, the Trump videos are going to horrify you, this might as well. It's that ridiculous. So there's two things there. First, you have this guy actually be willing to say that Trump has been cooperative. And the issue is there's a there's a optics issue of a lack of cooperation within this box of thousands that there were a couple of pages that had a little marking at the bottom, which we turned over. After that, we found that she had scanned the box so that it would be digitized. She had no idea that there was any class, classification markings on anything. And as soon as we found out about that, we called up DOJ to let them know and immediately provided them access to it. Now, you also turned over an empty folder marked classified to investigators. Where was this folder and why was it turned over? <laughs> the folder is kind of one of the more humorous aspects of this whole thing. Uh, this is not a classified folder. This is a folder that when my team went through and searched and they wrote up their report, which we turned over to DOJ, they saw it's a, rep it's a folder, a manila folder that says classified evening summary on it. And it was in the president's bedroom. Uh, he has one of those uh, landline telephones next to his bed, and it has a blue light on it, and it keeps him up at night. So he took the manila folder and he put it over it so that it would keep the light down so he could sleep at night. And it's just this folder. It says classified evening, brief, evening summary on it. It is not a classification marking. It's not anything that is controlled in any way. There's nothing illegal about it. There's nothing in it. And when DOJ found out about it, they went crazy. And they said they actually gave me a subpoena to say, give us over this empty folder that means nothing. How did they find out about a folder on his bed table? We put it in our report. We, when we did all of our searches, we wrote up reports on everywhere we searched, everywhere we looked, anything we found, where we found it. And we gave that to them because everything that we've done as part of that search has been in the spirit of full cooperation and compliance. And when they read that and they saw, oh, there's this folder here that is so far outside of the scope of the subpoena or anything else, they demanded it back. And so now the president has to find a different way to keep the blue light out of his lies. I'm sure he has other options, but uh, correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. There's also a similar folder on display at the Trump Tower bar. Yeah. Uh, he is under criminal investigation for potentially mishandling classified materials. I mean, doesn't the use of these folders suggest somewhat of a flippant attitude towards classified materials? Not at all. Not at all. This is a, these are folders that you know, he was given during his time in office. He didn't keep the contents of the folder, but the folder itself was interesting. Uh, so he did keep a copy of you know, some of the folders. He put one on display at the 45 bar. He put one on his phone down in Mar-a-Lago. When we went through the, uh, the boxes at the National Archives, we found a few more of them there. You know, this is, it's a, it's essentially it's a piece of stationery. It doesn't actually contain anything uh, controlled or, or anything really that's a problem. Well, he's obviously running for president. Again, you keep uncovering these classified documents outside of the settings in which they belong. What do you say to people who believe that he shouldn't be trusted with the nation's secrets? Nothing that we have found has any implications on him personally. Everything that we have found has been consistent with what I've been saying from the beginning, which is the White House across administrations 
their handling of classified documents is not the same as how the intelligence agencies handle it or the military handles it. And so documents are not controlled in the White House across administrations. When people leave the White House and GSA packs everything up, they get mixed in, as we've seen with President Trump, with President Biden, with Vice President Pence. And really, you know, what I say here is President Trump, this doesn't have anything to do with him. This has to do with White House procedures, which is one of the reasons why I say DOJ should get out of this and they should instead do a re review of what the procedures are in the White House and then legislate a change on how future White House administrations handle documents. Because that would solve the problem. One big difference between your client and the other two folks that you mentioned is the fact that once this issue was raised, your client did not automatically make an effort to turn o over everything. It's taken a while. Things are still being handed over. And it's not just potentially mishandling classified information. Your client is also under investigation for a possible obstruction. I would disagree with that because... That he's under investigation. Well, no, no not that, but no. that, that he didn't uh, try to cooperate. From the beginning, he has tried to cooperate. In fact, he had a meeting with the, uh, with the members of DOJ where he said, if there's anything else you need, let us know. DOJ has taken a position of, you know, really an adversarial position on this, where as much as we want to cooperate with them, they would rather make this into an adversarial fight and try to make it into a criminal case. G guys, I, I, when I saw that the first time, my jaw literally dropped. Look, I'm not going to say that there weren't instances, isolated moments where maybe Trump and his team were more cooperative than others. Like nothing is ever fully 100 percent black and white. But the broad story of Trump and his files is that it was a year long plus process because what happened was he left the White House with documents that didn't belong to him. And at some point, he was contacted by the archive people. This was back in 2021, mind you, right? This is 2021, not 2022 or 2023, 2021. And they said, you know, we have concerns that you have things that do not belong to you, but, but just general documents, but in particular, maybe classified stuff, you need to give them back. And Donald Trump didn't for a very long time. And then they eventually had to show up at his house and get some of the things. That wasn't like a, a raid or anything, the, the formal thing we saw from the FBI. And they did. They took a lot of stuff back. And at that point, Trump and his team were asked to sign a document swearing they gave everything back. And they did. They signed that document. And it turns out they didn't give it all back. And, you know, they that's when the search happened. And then there were these moments. We know this where Trump was at least telling his own team. It maybe didn't get all the way to the DOJ necessarily, but Trump was telling his team, I want to make a trade. So he's obviously with the mindset that, you know, these things are, are fine. And Trump was arguing that it actually does belong to him and all of this. It's, it's, it's not comparable, guys, to what we saw from Pence and Biden. This is why I always said the Pence and Biden investigation is bad news for Trump because people had no context for what Trump was doing. And now you see what somebody who made an honest mistake, two men from both from different parties, both being very, very respected, both vice presidents at the time of the infraction. And they both acted in the exact opposite way Donald Trump did. They cooperated. Trump didn't. And that second part, guys, I, I can't believe it. He used a classified file as a like a, a, a light blocker when you could use, I, I suppose, any thick piece of paper, literally any thick piece of paper, literally a towel, literally any a sock, literally like a napkin. I don't even know. You could use anything in the world. And Trump just had to use a classified folder. And on the one hand, they say to themselves, well, we didn't even think this would be a big deal because it's not really that important. And then the, the anchor is like, well, why was it there? Well, it was there. Because you thought it was important and you put it in the thing. So clearly what happened is Donald Trump was dragging random files, maybe random documents to his bedroom. It ended up there. And now they're looking up for an excuse about why it was there. And the excuse is he was using it as a nightlight blocker. When in reality, it's probably not that. And then we get to Trump's horrifying videos. Because again, he can't let moments be about anything but himself. And in both of these, he continues to sow discord and buddy buddy with fascist dictators. A major disaster is brewing. 
If I were president, the Russia-Ukraine war would never have happened, never in a million years. But even now, if I were president, I'd be able to negotiate an end to this horrible and rapidly escalating war within 24 hours. It can be done. You have to say the right things, not the wrong things. I think we helped lead Russia into that war by saying, well, if they took a small part of the country, that would be okay. Such a tragic waste of human life. When you look at all that's happening there, those cities are obliterated. First comes the tanks, and then come the nukes. Get this crazy war ended now. It can be done. And in fact, it's easy to get done. When I'm president, we will be a strong country again. People will never be playing these games like they've been doing to the United States of America. They don't respect us anymore. They respected us greatly two and a half years ago. They don't respect us anymore. Thank you very much. So in that first one, you really see him lean into this idea that the war never would have happened without him. And this is something he's been saying for, for, for since it started, but he's really been ramping it up in the last couple weeks. He's really been pushing this idea. But that's BS because, again, what we know is that this is a very complex international affair. And I think it likely would have happened regardless of who would have won the last election. And if it wouldn't have happened, the reason is that Donald Trump would have let Putin have whatever he wants. And I suppose then, you know, maybe they just roll their tanks into Kiev and nothing really happens and it ends in a few days. And I guess then you could say the war didn't happen because it was just a quick occupation. But that's that's just semantics. It would just be uh, an absolute uh, ramshod run over. But that's not really not letting it happen. But that's what Trump's trying to do. Right. The whole subtext here is that peace in this in, in his conception is just letting Russia have what it wants. And this is why he doesn't want to say his plan. It's a mixture. One, he doesn't have a plan. It's incredibly complex. If it could have been solved easily, it would have been solved by now. And two, his plan is be Russia's buddy, give Putin what he wants. And he reiterates that here in a sense. The situation in Ukraine is very dangerous, explosive, and escalating by the day. Joe Biden's weakness and incompetence has brought us to the brink of nuclear war, and now Biden is doing what he said 10 months ago would lead to World War III. He is sending in American tanks. It's far past the time for all parties involved to pursue a peaceful end to the war in Ukraine before this already horrific catastrophe spirals out of control and ends up leading, indeed, to World War III. And this would be a war like no other war, because this would be a nuclear war. As I have said many times before, Russia's invasion of Ukraine would have never happened if I was in the White House. Not even thinkable, not even a possibility. We must end this ridiculous war and demand peace in Ukraine now before it gets worse. And believe it or not, it would be easy to do. It would be very easy to do. Again, this this call for peace is good. We should have a call for peace. But without any kind of like guidelines, what it ends up being is a massive concession to the aggressor without any demands on them. Right. Like that's the thing. Right. It's like they get to keep some of the land they took and, you know, Ukraine doesn't get to join NATO. And but what like, you know, it, it's just it's just giving up to Russia. And I think a lot of people, especially American allies around the world, are horrified by this because it's just Donald Trump in an effort to score points against Biden. Because if Biden, for whatever reason, was on the other side, then he would be the biggest cheerleader for his side because it's all about politics. But also he wants to be friends with a fascist dictator. Donald Trump can only make it about himself. On the biggest night of the year, him and his lawyers are insulting and horrifying people.